Hello, my name is Veronica and welcome to the Learning Lab episode number 82, my Easter cards, April 2012. Come on into the lab and let me share a few techniques with you. This is basically the card that I made to send out to my friends and family. And after I did them all and I'd stamped happy on all but one of them, that's when I realized I didn't like the happy and I actually just liked the plain old Easter. So anyway, let's start with the card base. Now for this, I used watercolor paper and I pieced it together using a technique from Becca uh, at Amazing Paper Grace. So this is five and a half by seven and I seamed it together there, which you can see, but I later went back and covered mine with another piece of paper. But this is how I put it together using her technique and I'll include the link for you. Then the next part was to get my background base color. Came my base layer, which I cut from some die cuts with a view paper. And this is five and a quarter by six and three quarters. And I just put that down using some ATG. Then on top of that, Came this embossed layer so my initial idea for the background piece was to do the entire thing well I did that and you can see I did it here and of course I got the line because I was in a hurry and didn't position it properly and once I got it all done I realized I didn't want the whole thing done and that's where I went back to only half of the piece so I took my paper and put it inside of my Sizzix folder laid it that way and just put it through my machine just the one time and got a lovely embossed background. So then I went on to stencil the leaves on the background. And let me show you how I did that. Once I punched out my leaves to go on my card base, I'd initially tossed these into the trash. And what I wanted, realized I wanted to give something else to the background. Um, okay, let me back up. Just to give you an idea of how this would look without the leaves stamped on there, I have one that I did, and I'll just put it here. Looks pretty. Very nice. But it was something about doing this background that just upped the ante just a bit. So the stenciled leaves on the back is what I want to show you how to do. So I took the negative piece left from when I cut my leaves and that's what I used to stencil the background. I also used these inks from Martha Stewart because they closely match the papers that I decided to use. So starting with the pink one because it was on top, I randomly laid these down and some of them actually went off the edge of the page just to kind of give me more of an organic feel to it. I took my cosmetic wedge, made that into a ball. Now, if you, you know, have trouble with your hands and you can't hold that, you can get these already in a circle and just use some of your reverse tweezers to hold that together and that'll take some of the pressure off of your hand. So I tapped it into my ink and then what I had to do was create a little palette because I didn't want to go straight to my piece with all of that ink on there and it's quite a bit. So I tapped it off onto a piece of paper and then I went to here and that first one I just covered the entire leaf not concentrating in any area then if I wanted more I could go back into there tap off some and then go back into my leaf to gradually build up the color because as you well know you can always add but once you get that ink down it's very difficult to take it away and then once I was satisfied with the amount of ink on there, I simply removed the stencil and voila, a nice softness to the background. And then I just continued to repeat that with the blue and the purple and added just a bit of green. So now let's take a look at the leaves that are behind the bonnie. This is the finished one, but once I put it through my cobug, I left it in and I used this Ink It Up ink because that color was a better color for me than some of the Tim Holtz Distress ones and even for the one, I have like three or four different colors from Martha Stewart and this one was the best one. And these are pigment inks. Again, I made my little ball, 
put it into my ink, tapped off a bit, and then I simply went to my leaves. And in this one, I could press harder in spaces just to give it a variegated look. And once you get it down and you want to go in and really push it down in certain parts, you can. And uh, you end up with a really cool leaf. So let's just pop this one out. And there you are. Gorgeous. As heavy or as light of a saturation as you want. And since I'm right here, I'll show you an earlier one I did using, I think, some of the Martha Stewart inks or the Tim Holtz ones, I can't remember, but it gave me an entirely different look. This is more of a fall look, and this one is very springy just by changing up the colors of the ink. We're starting to build this card. Now the next one is to put on um, that lovely bunny rabbit, and I'll show you how I did him. Now to accomplish this bunny rabbit, I did a lot of trial and error. I did various different browns. Some of them uh, were Anna Griffin browns. Some were Martha Stewart until I came across colors that I liked. Now the only thing I have to caution you about is being careful when you take this out of the dye. As you can see, once I had inked it in this pretty soft pink, I pulled it out and this one was caught. I admit I was in a hurry and I didn't take my time, but if you take your time, you can get it out of there. Now, just to show you the difference, this was the Peel Paint Distress Ink. Beautiful, but it was too dark for my purposes. And this one was the Shabby Shutters Distress Ink. And again, it just wasn't the right green that I wanted. And the green that I wound up using was, again, the Ink It Up Green. And this one is called Tart Lime. Love it had it for probably seven years or more and it's still nice and good and juicy so let's move on from here for my demo piece I'm using actually the Martha Stewart one that came in here and it's the stem green that still wasn't the right green for me so I put this through my cuddle bug folder and I've already dry embossed it so I want to show you the same technique I used to do the green shading around here Oh, green and orange won't work. Well, pink and green. <laughs> Bear with me, y'all. It's been a long week. So, same technique, dabbing it in there and then putting it off onto my little palette. Now, my other palette I used, I threw it away. I should have kept it because I had such a beautiful collage of colors there. It was incredible. So, starting here, I just went... You know what? I'm totally lying. Stop the presses. I actually went with the lighter pink first. Reason being is that I wanted to get as close to that bunny as I could. So let me improvise here. Oh, I can use the side because I just need a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just pinch a little of the side go into that really light pink. It's so light, you can hardly see it, but once you finish, you'll be able to see the really subtle difference that it makes. Okay, it's there. You may not be able to tell, but it's very light pink back there. Now we're going to go back to the other pink and add in some shading. And instead of turning my hand, I'm just going to continue to turn the dot. Now the ink on your paper is still wet because it is a pigment ink. I can go back into this to pick up whatever color I need instead of going back into my ink pad. Slow and steady does it. And I can never say enough, you can always add more, but you're going to have the dickens of a time trying to take it off. <laughs> then once I got to here, I wanted a little more pink into the base of him, so I just went in and pressed down just to kind of blend it out. 
If you want a deeper edge, I'd say press in and come back towards the die with a little dabbing motion because if you push into it, you'll probably get ink where you don't want it. So it'll be easier to work from the edge back towards the die. Okay, so enough of that. Now, to get him out of there. If you're like me and you have little sweethearts running around, whether it's your child or your little furry friends, you have to be careful with your materials. So when I'm crafting, I do tend to use a magnetic mat to hold my dies and everything on, but I also use it to hold my safety pin. I do have little pokey tools that I can use, but I don't always grab them when I need them. So here, I just use this to get this started. Oh, and one other thing that I will do before I remove it from the die is that I'm going to wipe away some of that excess ink that's on there using just a little piece of paper toweling. So that's about the amount of pink that came off. So now for to get him out. And this is what I'll do. I'll take my thumb and just start to go around and loosen this just a little bit. Because once you get it away from the edge, you'll see that it'll start to pop out. Now you can use wax paper on this. I didn't because I needed to get to the inside of here. So there he is, nicely inked and ready to sit onto our card. Now for the border that went across the top. Now when I did this one, I did put wax paper down. I just simply put down my die, laid my wax paper on top, put my paper made my sandwich, put it through, and this just came right off. Easy peasy. So this is the piece that went across the top. And I tried to line this up as evenly as I could to the edge, and any excess was wrapped around. And of course, to glue mine down, I used the quick dry adhesive. Okay, so that was the top edge of all my cards. Now for my Easter that went here. This stamp is from um, G Studios, put out by Hampton Art, and also the Bonnie Rabbit that I use is also from G Studios. I played around with this Easter nine ways to Sunday, trying to come up with something that I liked. So I finally just use a variety of these ink pads to get it done. And starting with my lightest color, I put that down first. Now these pads are very, very nice and juicy so you know don't go crazy <laughs> pressing down or you're going to get ink everywhere now i didn't have this in my original one but i think i'll put a little bit of orange in there uh, we'll do some purple some green on the tip and then just a little bit of the turquoise blue down here pressed it down where i wanted it just making sure I cover all of my letters. And voila, there's my Easter. I think I have shared with you all the techniques that I put together um, for this card. Now when it was time to put the base and my other top piece together, I used two different adhesives. This is a, um, it's almost like a finger lift paper. Now I gotta remember that this is still wet. What I did was on the embossed parts, I went around with this and uh, put it down because I didn't want this flying off my card. This is a high tack tape. And once you put that down and lift it off, you can see that it's going to leave a line of adhesive down there for you. And I like it because you can lift it right off with your, with your fingers. Then for the other part, the non-embossed part, I just went around it with my um, ATG. Then I centered it as best as I could on my paper, fastened that down, put down my leaves, and on some of them I put them at different angles. Sometimes I put them going down that way, sometimes I may have turned them that way, really, you know, not a whole lot of rhyme or reason. And then for my cute little bunny, I popped him up on some dots. I used these 
not quite 3D, but as some other 3D ones I have, which are very thick. But these were thick enough and they're clear so that I wouldn't have to pay extra postage to get them through the mail, but it would give me just a little bit of depth on my card. So that's what I did and put it together. Loved it, but then felt I needed something over here. And that's when I went back and went through tons of happy stamps that I have. Wound up using uh, some Martha Stewart ones just to stamp that down. And once I did it all, I realized that I really didn't like it a whole lot. If I had it to do all over again, I would just simply stop at Easter. Thank you for joining me in the lab today. Please remember to check out my blog at inkillusions.blogspot.com. Happy Easter to all of you. I hope you enjoy this special time with your family and friends. And remember to honor the risen king. Until then.